Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update give or take on the various miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel and I actually think this might be a little bit less than two weeks this time. I've been painting up a bit of a storm, plus I'm cheating a little bit because there's one big bit of scenery that I actually painted ages ago but we'll talk about that first so uh, we'll get to that. But bunch of stuff here today from a bunch of different games. We have Fallout Wasteland Warfare, we have Elder Scrolls Cult Arms, we have Hellboy the board game. We have the He-Man game that I always remember, uh, forget the full title of, but it's the Archon Studios one. And then we have an entire warband for Warhammer Underworlds. So a lot of stuff, as always, painted with contrast paint. And we'll go from left to right, so we're starting with a big bit of scenery. So I finished painting this a while back, and the reason I didn't show it off in any Getting Stuff painted is because I wanted the twist of it being openable and showing what's inside to be kind of... Uh, first premiered in the Fall Away Sun Warfare Season 4 finale, which has now gone live, so I hope you all enjoyed that. But I did get this a while ago. It took me about a year to actually get around to planning out Season 4, but at the point at which I finished Season 3, I knew how I wanted Season 4 to begin and end, and I knew that I needed some kind of nuclear warhead prop. And I was looking up ones you can get on eBay and Etsy and things like that, and I almost went with uh, like just a large nook model um, with like candles around it and stuff. Uh, the reason I didn't go with that one is because I wanted something that looked like it could fire so it wouldn't be fit for purpose. I'm talking about something akin to like the nuclear bomb in Megaton in Fallout 3 so that wouldn't fit. I found this on Etsy I believe it was eventually fully customizable and openable. You can have the little warheads like I've done or you get one big chunky warhead that you can actually put in there instead and these they, they come off with some uh, frustration there but they do come off so you can just kind of replace them with whichever you want and it wasn't a particularly hard thing to um, to paint it is 3d printed so the the lines of the filament are kind of obvious if you look closely I spray painted it silver with just a box standard silver spray paint and then did a dry brushing of army painter rust the warheads are Militarm green contrast paint on top of silver and that is that. It's a great prop, it'll also just be a nice background prop for anything kind of semi-futuristic. Um, perfect for what I needed it for and I think it really set the scene for the finale. So yeah, one of the better props I've been able to find which is 3D printed and decent. It was a bit expensive I think, I don't, I, again I got it so long ago now I don't really remember but I do know it was on Etsy that I found it if you want to try and find this for yourself. Alright, I put that to one side so we can talk about the miniatures, which I guess are the main focus. For Fallout Waste on Warfare, I painted up a single Super Mutant, that's from the... I, I, I remember mentioning this a long time ago, but a friend who had the starter set didn't want it anymore, sold it to me super cheap, so they gave me a copy of everything in the starter box for Waste on Warfare. This is the Mutant with the sledgehammer from the box, and unlike mine, it doesn't have a bent sledgehammer, <laughs> so that's nice. So I'll probably be using this one as my primary representation, but that means we can have two now. So two big super mutants swinging these heavy hammers around. Uh, super simple paint job. I used the um, what I call the, the Hulk green contrast paint because I never remember what it's called. Mantis Warrior, I believe it is, um, which is a different green to what I originally used for the other super mutant because the new wave of contrast paints hadn't been released back then. <clears throat> also, apologies, I am very congested today. It's allergies. It's nothing serious. But I've been sneezing a lot, so I'm, I'm just feeling very choked up. Uh, silver for the silver parts with the same rust paint I just talked about on top. Army Painter's rust paint is fantastic. Haven't tried the rest of their range, but their rust is it's called dry rust. It's just absolutely perfect for the, the purposes I use it for. Um, let's see, snake bite leather for some of the dirt on the base and also the sledgehammer's like handle part. And Basilic Adam Grey on top of Grace here as always and then they come in green plastic from 2017 which is so long ago now I don't want to think about it. From Elder Scrolls Call to Arms we have the last two minis from what was called the Adventurer's Companion box I think it was so this is just a generic um, Ultimer and a generic Khajiit with dual wield uh, sword and dagger I think yeah. So I basically used the same kind of colour palette for those as the ones from the box I've covered already which had Lydia in it, um, Kajaro and I'm forgetting the third one. Oh, it was just an orc berserker or or, something, or barbarian, I mean, something like that. So it's a mixture of basically all the brown contrast paints. So you have a little bit of snake bite leather, you have wildwood, you have Garagax Sewer, and I think I've actually used the correct name for that contrast paint for the first time ever. I'm pretty sure it's Garagak. 
either way, uh, and also um, Rattling Grime and Basilicanum Grey for the base with some Nasdrag Yellow for the Dwarven Piping that's on this particular base and just a wash over the top. So super simple, very effective, it helps that the Mini is detailed and for the Khajiit here, much the same. What did I use for his skin tone though? Let's see if I can remember that. I think I used the Agaros Dunes. I think I did. It looks like it. If not that, then probably just Skeletal Horror, just because the, the official paint job has him be like just tanned fur, essentially. Oh, and for the fur on the boots and like ruffs and things, that's that is definitely just snake bite leather. Uh, sorry, no, Skeletal Horror, Skeletal Horror is what I meant. And <clears throat> see what I mean about being congested and lead belcher silver for the silver parts. Super simple. So that is a box of other characters done for Call to Arms. I'm not sure when that will be next coming back, but it means we can have some new things on the table when it does. And nicely, they're almost already direct center camera, but we have some more frog themed monsters from the Hellboy board game to cover. Um, I, I said last time that I thought there was three sets of three different basic frog type enemies and they just escalated in strength. I'm not 100% sure on that. It could just be their alternative poses and they're actually all the same strength. Some of them seem to have weapons though. These guys though, uh, they're, they're just, they're basically unarmed and in rags as well. So I presume they're similar to the ones we talked about last time. On that note, literally the exact same job that I did last time. Why is it struggling so much? There we are. Literally the same paint job I did last time to keep them in set with the ones I've already painted from the pack. So these three are all done with the Mantis Warrior Green, uh, the, the sewer paint I believe that was for their tattered rags that they have left over. They're not hiding their shame. And the base I just did in pure black paint just because I didn't want to do anything fancy for them. And we also have the, I think it's just called Frog Spawn, it's just like little spawning pods where they come out of in gameplay terms. Same colours there, I mixed together a couple of green contrast colours, so there's a little bit of Striking Scorpion in there just to add some like distinction to different frogs, and a little bit of the Nurgling Slime Technical Paint from Games Workshop on the base as well. But that's three of them, so there's still six more frogs to do, three of one pose, three of another. Um, one of them has weapons as I said. And then there's the big frog boss. And then I think that's basically everything I need done to play this game. <clears throat> Unless there's any kind of optional boss that shows up or anything like that. Because there is a, a human sized boss as well. But the like monster frog is like three times the height of these guys. So that, that'll take a little bit. But it shouldn't be too hard to paint. Alright, move the camera along a little bit to discuss painting up some more of the He-Man miniatures. That I started talking about last time with He-Man himself. And uh, who else did we have last time? I don't remember. I think it might have just been He-Man because I'd only just finished him. Skeletor was a work in progress at that point. So we have Skeletor. I think he's just called Merman Trapjaw, Lockjaw, one of the two. Stratos and Man at Arms. So two goodies, three baddies. Uh, the tutorial game that the box comes with is three on three. Normally it's five on five, I think, or thereabouts, depending on points. So this is enough now that we can actually try it. The only stopping point is there also has to be some painted scenery and it's... I'm gonna do the the two-tone spray zenith method that I did for the Warcry scenery. Pro probably a different colour, I might have to pick up a different shade of spray. I think maybe like... I was originally considering black base and then just angling the kind of turquoise. But now I'm reconsidering that and wondering if maybe green with the blue angled down for the zenith or vice versa might look a bit more interesting. I'm not sure yet, that's that's an in-progress decision that hasn't been made yet. But anyway, for Skeletor we have Frostheart for his weird skin tone except his face because it's the comic book version I think so he's got a green face which was not how it was in the cartoon from what I remember. And I can't quite tell if that's fully in focus, I hope it is. The green was the same green I was talking about, actually I think it was Striking Scorpion for that. And Luxine Purple for all the purple parts, with some known oil, not applied to everything, just applied in areas to try and bring out some extra detail. And a little bit of bow Red for the, whatever that is on the strap of his harness there, and just some Lead Belcher Silver for the sword. The bases that all look like the sandstone are just Agros Dunes with non oil over the top. But yeah, I think Skeletor was struggling a little bit there to stay in focus. Cool Mini, I mean Skeletor's funny so many memes 
if you if you haven't seen the meme of him going through like a mirror teleporter, then his hand coming back and punching the mirror so nobody can follow, but his hand somehow doesn't get severed. That that's pretty good. Merman, uh, probably the weakest of the bunch here that I painted. I think I, I don't even really remember the character much, but this was Eldari Emerald, which is a green contrast paint. I keep forgetting I have. But I was looking into, I, I kind of wish I'd used this when I was painting um, Electro, but I remembered I had it for him because the contrast paints I was looking at and have talked about already today, they didn't match up to the, the skin tone he should have, but Eldari Emerald actually does get pretty close. So I'm happy with that. And then I just used the Yandin Yellow for basically everything else and Frost Heart for the blue crystal bars. And again, no oil over the top. Everything based in gray sear. I, I use a uh, spray paint for most of these just because it's easier and quicker and it gives you a smoother finish to work on. Over here, same blue paint for the blue parts. Uh, this was Volopus Pink for, his color scheme is all over the place by the way. Uh, for the helmet and the thing hiding his shame. For the dark silver parts, I applied Black Templar and then did a dry brushing of Necron Compound over the top and then Non Oil on top of that to bring it back down a little bit. Again, just trying to match up to the official paint job. Fun miniature, I do remember this guy from the cartoon. Not much else to say about them, and the base is, as I said, oh yeah, the ones that have tree bark in them is just um, snake bite leather. That's the only difference. So that is Team Evil. Uh, to get the full game out of the box set though, I would also have to paint up Evil Lynn and who's the other villain you get? Uh, Triclops. So then you would have the five. If I wanted to paint up all the goodies, um, there's who, Orko, is that the name of the wizard guy, and Ram Man, and then, which is a very funny name. Anyway, Stratos, the Birdman. That's a lot of Basilicanum Grey, a lot of Frost Heart. I'm going to need to buy more Frost Hearts, and I've been using it a lot recently. And then Bal Red, with non oil over the top. I'm not too happy with my paint job on this guy, unfortunately, but it it's okay. Probably the weakest of the good guys, if I had to like, gauge them like that. Good miniature though. Someone pointed out something that I, I, I didn't really catch on, but I'm paying more attention to now that it was pointed out to me. Part of the reason they like the Archon Studios miniatures, the He-Man range, is because they do try real hard to hide mold lines just naturally by how you assemble the miniature. I never really caught that, but I've been paying more attention to it now that it was pointed out to me, and they're absolutely correct. An effort has been made to try and conceal mold, because these are all assembled. They're, they're not one piece miniatures. They are all assembled, they're in a load of bits on sprue when you get them. So it is actually quite impressive that the mold lines are not visible because I, I can't get rid of them. It's not a skill I ever learned and I don't have the patience for it. So I appreciate that a lot now, especially now it's been pointed out to me. For Men at Arms here, it is Griffhound Orange. It is a little bit of, ooh, Striking Scorpion Green, I think that is. The, the Vibrant Green is usually Striking Scorpion Green and then some frost heart again and he's just wearing the normal attorney and soldier armor slightly differed because he's you know a named character he has plot armor still got him gray for his boots and his hiding his shame parts and i think that about covers it i don't quite like that he's a little off step on his base but that is how you assemble him but yeah he's a little off center which is a little annoying but fun character decent enough and I'm looking forward to trying that, so I'm going to have to make a decision regarding that scenery real soon. Last but not least, we have an entire warband for Warhammer Underworlds. They have made their debut in that series for the few of you that follow it. It is the Storm of Celestis, and I accidentally painted their Griffhound to look like a budgery guard. That wasn't entirely on purpose. They were supposed to have like blonde flowing locks, and I accidentally did budgie colors. It, it happens. I've had these assembled and spray painted waiting for paint for a long time and I just, I, I don't know, there's just something about painting Stormcast that I don't like and I, I can't really put my finger on it. I, I quite liked painting the Farst Riders originally for Underworld because they were the first ever Stormcast I'd ever painted so it was a challenge because I hadn't done anything like that before. Then I got round to Domitan Storm Coven for Underworlds, that was the next Stormcast I painted along with a few for Warcry. And they just started becoming very formulaic, like kind of dull and not super great to paint, especially if you're not great at picking out details. <laughs> so it took me a long time to work up the desire to paint these and I just decided to finally do it because they've been sitting and I wanted to move on to other warbands that I've had sitting in their boxes for ages. 
and to add a bit more variety to the series as well by having a new warband on the table. So I covered a long time ago how I paint Stormcast armor. It is essentially just Nazdrag yellow on top of Gracier base paint, dry brushing of Necron compound and then non-oil over the top. Simple as that, that's just the base coat with non-oil for the white robes, Bell red for the red parts, Black Legion for the black parts of their Thundercast storm bows or whatever they're called. Uh, the blue is Celestium blue, I keep using it because it's the blue contrast paint that matches the blue of official paint jobs the most. I must admit it's a very weak contrast paint, it, I just feel like it's finish quality is not great. It always seems kind of splotchy and that's not down to me applying it poorly because it happens every time, it's down to the contrast paint itself which is a great shame you to have it like compared to how the Frost Heart has been applying to those other miniatures I've showed off today. It's night and day in terms of like the quality of it so it might be the most fitting blue it's not a great contrast paint so I'm glad that I haven't had to use it for anything more than like shoulder pads and the occasional backside of a cape for a Stormcast so yeah it's not a great contrast paint unfortunately or I guess I've only ever used one bottle of it so it could absolutely just be a bad ball I should make that clear I, I don't know but that's the kind of experience I've had with it so far uh, oh yeah for the leaves on the base that is Mantis Warrior Green and there's some coins on this one that's a, the other nice thing about Underworlds, their bases are always a bit more interesting than your bog standards. But yeah, finally got them done. Should have used some kind of blonde on this, but I had to go and use bright yellow and I, I just, I can't unsee your bog standard budgie. <laughs> just the bird in the cage and that's what this Griffin looks like. I'm absolutely not changing it now that I've seen it, I'm fine with it. It's going to stay like that forever. Uh, Sleek is this one's name. Sitting very proudly or standing very proudly on the stones there. <clears throat> That's just the base coat with the Soul Blight contrast paint over the top, the same one I was using for the Maw Tribe Gorger last time. And have been doing that actually, there's definitely going to be some of those in the next video because I'm like 90% done with another one at time of recording this. So yeah, just as a matter of note, I don't have much else to say about them, they're Stormcast so they're boring, but hey, it's, they actually do play quite interestingly in Underworlds because they're a uh, objective setting sniper based team. And that is definitely to Underworld's credit that you can have multiple like Stormcast teams. They all play completely differently. And that is going to do it for another painting update for the channel. I have been really getting on with my painting recently. And as I say, there's definitely going to be some more of the Gorgers for the Maw Tribe for Warcry next time. I'm going to try and work up to that scenery for He-Man so we can hopefully try it before the end of the year. Same with uh, getting the frogs finished for Hellboy so that we can try that before the end of the year. In the meantime... There'll be things filling the slot now that Fallout's done that we've had before, like Warcry and um, some other stuff as well. In terms of painting, uh, you might be seeing a return with some 40k miniatures, but not because I'm going back to 40k. Uh, I'm interested in trying out Kill Team, specifically the 2021 version, just because I ain't paying 30 something pounds for just a rulebook for the a version that came out a week ago. That's just an absolutely insane. I don't know what Games Workshop are smoking with prices for a book. I mean, the, the star is set with everything it comes with, I understand the price of that completely. But just a book? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that ain't happening. Anyway, I hope this inspired you to get through your pile of grey shame. Um, even if you don't have fantastic technical skill, you use contrast paints and you can get away with it. You do okay, as my models show off, because I don't know how to paint well either. I will see you in about two weeks, there or thereabouts, for another update. Be sure to come back then, and if you want to show me what you've been painting, feel free to do so via... Twitter, Blue Sky, Discord, wherever you want. And until then, ta-ta for now.